Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. The first step in the preparation of multiple preparations is the establishment of the proper line of draw. The mandibular first bicuspid is protected with a amalgam matrix, and pencil marks are placed where the tracer cuts are going to be prepared on the molar and the bicuspid. Now, both of these preparations will be prepared at the same time. A Densco 1 8 A diamond is used to make the mesial slice. This is started from the lingual, making sure that you do not cut the adjacent tooth. A buccal access is also carried out, taking care that this margin is not carried too far to the buccal surface to have an excess display of metal. When the slice is completed, you should freely be able to move the diamond through this area. A Densco three-quarter AX diamond is used as a surveyor and then used to make the tracer cuts on the lingual and distal surface of the bicuspid and the mesial, distal, buccal, and lingual surfaces of the molar. This instrument is carried to one half the diameter of the diamond instrument to the proper cervical limit. It is most important that the handpiece is held parallel to the line of draw of the preparations. The same instrument is used to reduce the axial surfaces. Here we are starting on the lingual surface, blending into the mesial slice, previously established with the 1 8 A diamond. This peripheral or axial reduction is carried out to the depth of the tracer cuts, which is one half the diameter of this 3 quarter A instrument. When the lingual surface has been reduced sufficiently on the bicuspid, then the peripheral or proximal surfaces of the molar will be reduced. Here again, it is important that the handpiece is held in the long axis of the draw of these abutment teeth. The taper of the diamond instrument then will establish the taper in the preparation. The tip of the diamond is carried to the extent of the finishing line, the cervical finishing line of this preparation. Now the mesial buccal portion or reduction is carried out and blended into the original mesial lingual reduction. And the distal slice of the bicuspid completes this peripheral reduction in the bicuspid tooth. The occlusal reduction is carried out with the same diamond, started with making tracer cuts on the occlusal surface of the bicuspid to the full diameter of the diamond instrument. The tip should be buried slightly deeper. Tracer cuts are also placed on the molar. The occlusal reduction then is carried to the depth of those tracer cuts making sure that the surfaces match the original occlusal surface. These surfaces should undulate slightly. A 
lingual access is used here to complete the final occlusal reduction on the molar tooth. The occlusal is further refined from the buccal access. The same diamond is now used to round the line angles on the molar and the bicuspid. This is an aid in waxing and also reduces the stress on the final casting. This diamond is also used then to prepare the buccal protection on the bicuspid. One seventy L carbide is used as a surveyor and then used to prepare the mesial and distal boxes in the bicuspid. It is important that the handpiece again is held in the, the line of draw of this bridge when preparing these boxes and the retentive grooves in the molar. These retentive grooves then will be parallel to each other when the handpiece is held in this way. The isthmus then is used to connect the mesial and distal boxes and is the final phase in the use of this 170L carbide. A finishing diamond is used to refine the cervical chamfer and the axial surfaces of the molar and the bicuspid preparation. This diamond reduces the scratches left with the coarser diamond. It is also used for refining the occlusal surfaces and removing scratches from the occlusal of the bicuspid and the molar. A sand disc also can be used to remove the scratches and to polish the preparations, taking care not to remove the finishing line. A 7902 finishing carbide is used to further enhance the cervical chamfer on the bicuspid and the molar. This instrument also helps polish the axial surfaces of these preparations. We will note the sharp boxes and the clear and sharp cervical chamfer around this preparation that was prepared at the same time the molar preparation was established with sharp retentive grooves and a very definite sharp cervical finishing line. When prepared in this way, there is a more efficient use of instruments and both preparations are prepared in approximately the same time as a single unit. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu/license.